You're probably watching this because you're an app developer. How creative. You want the instant fame and riches that come from being the new Foursquare, the new Urban Spoon. You want that Angry Bird money, don't you? Well, maybe you just came up with a creative new way to solve a problem that a lot of people have. Whatever your reason for making your app, you probably want to know what you're going to have to agree to if you want your app to be sold in the iPhone App Store. That's what this video is all about. First of all, you should know that Apple is very strict about what goes on to their devices, and they have to approve all apps. Quite a few apps don't even make the cut, so all your hard work could be fruitless if you do something to tick off Apple. But before you even have a chance to be in their store, you have to agree to their developer license agreement. And there's a lot of weird stuff in there. For one thing, you can't talk about the developer license agreement. Once you receive the agreement and sign it, you cannot talk about any of the terms of the agreement. It's like the first rule of Fight Club. And if you talk, you could be in breach, and you could get your app kicked out. Keep that in mind. You also definitely cannot reverse engineer anything, even if it's considered fair use for the sake of interoperability. Oh, and you can't tinker with any Apple products or create a way for others to do so. This makes it so developers who create apps that work with open source software could be banned or never let into the Apple Store. Now, even if you successfully make an app, there are some caveats. Not only does Apple need to approve your app, but they can reject it for any reason whatsoever, even if you didn't break any of the rules. Of course, Apple is a business and they can choose to work with whoever they want, but consumers and developers should know that Apple reserves this power so it can ban apps that it doesn't want to compete with, or apps that are giving its competitors too much of a business advantage. Beyond rejection, Apple can straight up kill your app anytime it wants. Even if it's really popular and people all over the world are downloading it, Apple can take you out of the App Store and remotely remove the app from every iPhone and iPad it's been downloaded to. And let's say you made your app using Apple Software Development Kit, or SDK for short. In that case, you can only distribute your app through the official App Store. And if Apple rejects that app, you can't distribute it through any competing app stores. You would have just completely wasted your time. Oh, and no matter what problems ensue, the agreement states that Apple won't be liable for more than $50 in damages. Seriously, only 50 bucks. Which means that if Apple, you know, accidentally kills your app or maybe leaks sensitive information involving your app, no matter how bad it gets, Apple totally has your back to a maximum of 50 bucks. Yeah, if I were a developer, this stuff would probably keep me awake at night too. Then again, Apple is a private company and signing their agreement is really your only gateway to put your software in front of about a bazillion iPhones and iPads. That's why Apple can make such crazy demands. By the way, all this information came from an article written by the Electronic Frontier Foundation and it's released under a Creative Commons attribution license, just so you know. And hey, why not use those 50 bucks you got from Apple to, you know, keep these videos going? If you're enjoying and learning from these videos, donate just a little. All you have to do is go to our YouTube channel or newmediarights.org. You could get your app kicked out. I said app again. <laughs> My god. Wait, are you trying to say app? I'm trying to say app. App. Uh, app. app. app.